Episode 10. Let's Boil the Fish. Before long, Roger returned with his arms full of white, clean cotton flowers. They were still warm, soft, and fluffy from being in the sun. Blair removed the cotton seeds from a few cotton flowers. Then, with her back to Roger, she removed her stained underwear and placed some cotton on damp underwear she'd washed the night before with bath water before putting it on. We should probably put these cotton flowers under the sun. We don't know whether these are clean, Blair said worriedly. What if there were insects in them? She was about to get up from the nest when Roger held her in place and said to her thoughtfully, Stay here. I'll go put them under the sun. You're still bleeding and you need to rest. Blair just got her period, but she was being cared for like a baby. She wasn't used to this as it was a monthly occurrence which became part of everyday life. But in this realm, it was different. She somewhat envied the females here. Of course, what she envied the most was the God-given gift of only getting their period once a year. She was jealous of them to the point of frustration. Seeing that Roger was about to carry the cotton flowers outside without first placing something on the ground, Blair quickly stopped him and said, You're not just going to place them on the ground, right? I have to put them in my intimate area. How hygienic would they be if you just placed them on the ground? Please put something underneath them. Oh. Although Roger thought otherwise, he still did as Blair said, as females in heat came first. He first spread out a piece of animal skin on the ground in a sunny area outside before placing the cotton flowers on the animal skin. When Roger was done, he turned around to see Blair walking out of the house. He quickly carried her back to the grass nest. I told you to stay in the grass nest. You're such a stubborn ape, Roger said, pretending to be angry. Blair smiled awkwardly and placed her hands behind her back. What are you hiding? Roger eyed Blair suspiciously. Nothing. Blair quickly shook her head. Roger sniffed. The sweet and fragrant smell of blood was still there. He looked at the grass nest with a strange expression. By the way, where's that tiny piece of clothing of yours? Blair's face fell and she took out her hand. It's in my hand. I was going to wash it. Roger reached out his hand and took Blair's underwear from her. Hey! Blair panicked and quickly tried to take it back, but Roger was tall and his arms were long. The underwear was beyond her reach once he raised his arm. I told you, you need to rest. I'll go wash them. Roger then got up and left. Knowing that she wouldn't be able to get her underwear back, Blair didn't chase after him and instead resignedly sat on the grass nest. It was getting late and Blair's stomach began to growl. After Roger hung her clean underwear on a tree branch, she asked him, When are we going to eat? It's almost noon. It's way too early. The sun hasn't reached the center yet. Seeing that Blair seemed to be very hungry, he said, I'll pick some fruits for you to eat for now, and we'll have meat earlier in the afternoon. For leopard beast men, it was indeed too early to eat. Leopard beast men were carnivorous, and they only had one meal every day. They usually ate in the afternoon when the temperature was lower. After comfortably filling their tummies, they'd let the food digest for a bit before sleeping. Females had a more varied diet. They would pick some wild fruits and grasses with thick leaves to eat, but those would just be snacks. Just one meal? Blair asked incredulously. Yeah. Blair was dumbfounded that the Beastmen followed what the modern world calls a caveman diet. Maybe both their worlds had more things in common. She'd been hungry for a while, but did that mean she would have to starve till the afternoon? Blair held her growling stomach and said, But I'm really hungry. I want to eat rice. Roger's expression changed. I'm in heat, so you have to do what I say and bring me what I want, Blair proudly said. Blair was on her periods. If she didn't get what she wanted to eat, she would turn into an angry monster that even the likes of Roger would be afraid of. You hate rice. I don't, Blair said. 
But I think meat will do too. Just bring me some food before I eat you. Roger's heart softened and he replied, Then I'll go and hunt for some smaller prey. Blair wasn't used to troubling others. They were some distance away from the forest and she didn't have the heart to let Roger go all the way there to get food for her. Wait, is there any food nearby? There's got to be fish in the river, right? You eat fish? They taste awful. Roger stared at Blair with an incredulous look on his face. He then remembered something and continued, But isn't he technically a cat? Cats love fish, Blair thought. Oh, right. You're an ape. Apes are omnivorous. I didn't know your people liked to eat fish. Roger couldn't believe it. Fish have such a pungent taste that I can't stomach it. And there are so many small bones in the meat. How am I going to eat that? Roger went on a long rant. We leopards only catch a big fish when we need the bones. We throw the meat into the river to feed the other fish. Only physically disabled beast men when on the fish to satisfy their hunger, Roger said proudly. Fish is great. My mom cooked it all the time. I miss her. I wonder where she is. Does she know that I'm here? Blair got emotional for a little while as Roger watched on. Roger took Blair's head in his hands and gave her a hug. She could feel him purring. I know you miss your people, but you're here now. I will try to always make you happy, Roger whispered. Blair felt embarrassed that she got emotional. She took a deep breath and quickly switched gears. I'm still confused as to why you all don't eat fish, she spoke. However, she recalled that over here they didn't even season their meat when they roasted it, which made her understand a bit more. She thought for a moment. Okay, fish will taste good after you put a bit of those medicinal herbs on it. Okay, if you like to eat fish, I'll go down to the river to catch fish for you. They're easy to catch. I'll be right back. Roger then took off his loincloth in front of Blair without a care in the world, transformed into a leopard, and ran out. Blair was now used to seeing all of Roger. Her face flushed for a moment as her eyes shifted towards the lower part of his body, but she acted as if nothing had happened. Before long, a soaked leopard came back with a large, meter-long fish between its jaws, leaving footprints in the shape of plum blossoms in its wake. Blair glanced at it. From its familiar expression, she knew that it was Roger. She gave him a small smile. That was fast. Roger spat out the fish, which was still flopping around, despite having Roger's teeth pierce its skin fatally. Roger proudly raised his head, then transformed back into a human. The moisture in his fur instantly squeezed out in the process. Splash! The ground beneath Roger's feet was cool from the water. Blair's eyes again directed themselves towards Roger's firm and masculine body. Roger put on his skirt and started a fire under the tree at the entrance to the house. He then asked Blair, We ate sandalwood bark-flavored meat yesterday, so want to eat willow bark-flavored meat today? Okay. Blair found those logs pretty interesting. She could combine those with the cooking methods used on Earth and create even more delicious food. Roger carried out a few branches with dense green foliage that resembled that of parasol trees and threw them into the bonfire. The fresh wood immediately lit up the moment they came into contact with the fire as if oil had been poured on it. The blue smoke that rose from the fire had the fresh smell of willow bark. Blair held her breath in astonishment. So willow trees were high in lipids. She didn't know that such a fascinating species existed in nature. Roger was about to roast the fish when Blair came to her senses and quickly shouted, Wait! Huh? Roger turned back and looked at Blair. You're just going to roast the fish like that? Blair was shocked. Aren't you going to scale it? Aren't you going to remove its gills? Blair had seen and helped her mother in the kitchen many times before. Thus, she knew how to clean a fish. God, scale, remove the gills. Roger immediately replied, the fish has to be roasted outside anyway. Isn't it cleaner if you leave the scales on? And you're not even eating the head anyway. Why would you need to remove the gills? That's troublesome. Blair was speechless as his words made sense for this world. 
She simply carried the stone basin and walked outside, then said in an authoritative voice, Then we won't roast the fish. We'll boil it instead. Boil? There was confusion in Roger's eyes.